questions to the product rule and quotient rule worksheet from class today. Uh, I'll probably end up breaking this into two videos, so this will just be the first page. Um, in this first problem, you're asked to find the derivative of this big quotient right here. So I think most people, when they look at this thing, immediately think quotient rule, which is good since this is the product rule and quotient rule worksheet. However, it turns out there's a much easier way you can do this one. Uh, if you'll, this will be kind of a common theme in this class that if you're willing to do a little bit of algebraic work, you can save yourself a lot of calculus work. So two options in terms of how you proceed on this specific problem. So what I'm going to do here is attack this problem two different ways. One way you can do it is by noticing that in the numerator, what you have is x plus 1 to the third power. Uh, how do you know that? It's a good question. I just told myself I asked a good question. Um, if you were to FOIL this all out, if you did x plus 1 times x plus 1 times x plus 1, you would get x cubed plus 3x squared plus 3x plus 1. If you don't believe me, try it. I mean, you'll see that. How would you recognize that? I don't know that you would unless you have seen it before. If you have a suspicion that this x plus 1 could cancel out, you could do like polynomial long division or something and try to divide this by x plus 1 and see if x plus 1 is a factor of this guy with the goal of canceling one of them out. But at any rate, maybe you take my word for it that the numerator here really is x plus 1 to the third power. And therefore, before I've done any calculus, I can cancel out one of these x plus 1's and this x plus 1 and say, really, the question's asking me to figure out what is the derivative of x plus 1 to the second power. And there's a few ways you can do that. You could use the product rule um, because this is x plus 1 times x plus 1. Or you could FOIL this thing out if you really want to do as much algebra and as little calculus as possible. You could say, this is just asking me what's the derivative of x squared plus 2x plus 1. And the derivative of x squared plus 2x plus 1, the derivative of the sum is the sum of the derivatives. So I take the derivative of each part individually. I get 2x here, a plus 2, and a plus 0. And my solution is just 2x plus 2. Um, this is the same solution you'd get, although in a slightly different form if you use the product rule in this stage. And to use the product rule, you'd recognize that this is x plus 1 times x plus 1. It turns out there's this thing called the chain rule, which makes this even easier. But since we haven't learned that yet, I'll refrain from talking about that. Here's one way you could do this. And if you do it this way, can you simplify your answer into a linear function? Damn right I can. I already did. Here's a linear function right here. However, I think most people would not do that. Most people would do, I guess I could call this option 2. Although really, it's the option that I think most people would take. And it's to use the quotient rule. It's the quotient rule because I have something divided by something else. So playing the role of f in my quotient rule is this thing up in the numerator x cubed plus 3x squared plus 3x plus 1. And playing the role of g is the denominator, the x plus 1. And f prime and g prime are both things I can figure out uh, by using the power rule. So now I have these four pieces and I can use those to figure out the derivative. I can kind of do something like this, say that my derivative is f prime, which is 3x squared plus 6x plus 3, times g, which is x plus 1, minus g prime, which is just 1, sure, I'll write it, times f, which is x cubed plus 3x squared plus 3x plus 1. And that whole thing is getting divided by g squared, playing the role of g is x plus 1, so I got x plus 1 squared. This does not look anything like this. Apparently they're equal, unless I've screwed something up. Um, I guess it's reasonable, it's possible that they're the same. I'd have to do a lot of algebra to figure it out. Uh, the way I could do some algebra, well, let's see, it's kind of tricky. I'll have to pretend that I don't already know the answer when I decide what I should do. One thing you could do, I think a lot of people would naturally think, to FOIL this out. So you'd get 3x cubed plus 9x squared plus 9x plus 3 if you foiled this whole thing out. And then combine like terms, subtract all this stuff. And then see if what's left over will factor. Um, if you happen to know that this thing right here is x plus 1 cubed, you can save yourself some time. You can say that over here, I have 3 times x squared plus 2x plus 1 times x plus 1. And from that, I'm subtracting x plus 1 to the third power. And that whole thing is divided by x plus 1 squared. Uh, but x squared plus 2x plus 1 is just x plus 1 squared. So this is equal to 3x plus 1 cubed minus 1x plus 1 cubed divided by x plus 1 
squared. So 3, here's x plus 1 times x plus 1 times this x plus 1 minus x plus 1 cubed. And so what I have is 3 of these x plus 1 cubed things minus 1 of them. I have 2 of these x plus 1 cubed things. And I'm dividing by x plus 1 squared. And now if I cancel out x plus 1 squared uh, with the x plus 1 cubed, I'm left with 2 times x plus 1, which sure enough is the same thing that I got up there. I'm happy. Did this problem a couple different ways. Probably spent too much time on it, so I'll move on to the next one. Next one, x squared e to the x divided by x plus 1. I don't know if there's any great tricks you can do with this one. This is just a nasty, ugly problem. You look at this, it's something divided by something else. So, okay, I'll use the quotient rule. When I'm using the quotient rule, I need to figure out what's playing the role of f, which is my numerator. So x squared times e to the x. Playing the role of g is the denominator, it's x plus 1. G prime, I can figure out it's the derivative of x plus the derivative of 1. The derivative of x is just 1. The derivative of 1 is 0, so g prime is just 1. Figure out f prime, that's hard. Well, kind of hard. Figure out f prime, you have to take the derivative of this thing right here. But to take the derivative of this thing right here, you have to use the product rule. So what's going on in this problem is I have a product rule nested inside a quotient rule. So to figure out f prime, I use the product rule and playing the role of f. And yes, I'm reusing the letter f here. I know that's not great form. As I mentioned in class, one time I made this f1 and this f2 and students freaked out. So I'm just going to use f's and g's. Blame past students if you must. Uh, playing the role of f is the x squared. And playing the role of g is the e to the x. These are the two things being multiplied here that I'm trying to find the derivative of. And the nice thing about those two things is I can figure out each of their derivatives. f prime is 2x and g prime is e to the x. And so I can throw all of those together. I can use the product rule to figure out that uh, the derivative of x squared e to the x is f prime, which is 2x, times g, which is e to the x, plus g prime, which is e to the x, times f, which is x squared. If you feel like cleaning this up, um, I guess you could factor out an x e to the x from this. And what you'd have left would be 2 plus x. Is this prettier than this? I don't know. Beauty is subjective. Um, whatever you want, here's f prime written right here. Uh, what do I do here? I don't know, maybe I circle it or something. This is not my answer. This is just f prime. That goes right here. But now I can figure out my answer to the quotient rule. So I take these four pieces of information and I apply the quotient rule. And the quotient rule tells me that the derivative of this divided by this, f divided by g, is f prime, which I just said over here, was x e to the x times 2 plus x. That's just f prime. Multiply that by g, which is x plus 1. From that, subtract g prime, which is just 1, and multiply that by f, which is x squared e to the x. And then divide that whole thing by g squared. So x plus 1 squared. Could you clean this up? It's a good question. Um, I suppose you could. I'm not sure that I want to, but you could. Maybe I'll write or. And see, both my terms have an e to the x in them, so I could factor out an e to the x up in the numerator here. What that would leave me with is an x, a 2 plus x, and an x plus 1. Uh, and then over here, I would be left with just an x squared. And I would divide that whole thing by x plus 1 squared. So if I felt like it, I could foil out the numerator here. I could say this is e to the x times, let's see, x plus 2 times x plus 1 is x squared plus 3x plus 2. Um, but if you multiply that by x, you get x cubed plus 3x squared plus 2x. And then from that, you got to subtract an x squared for this guy and multiply that by x plus 1 squared. Um, so finally, another way I could write this problem would be I could say it's maybe x e to the x. I like the idea of factoring out an x from all this stuff. And then I'd have left x squared. This is the x cubed turning into x squared. I had three of these x squareds. I took away one of them. So I got two of the x squareds left. I'm going to write that as 2x because I just factored out an x. And then plus 2. And that whole thing gets divided by x plus 1 squared. That's a very algebraically simplified answer. 
Um, but to tell you the truth, this is a perfectly fine answer down here too. It's good to be able to do those algebraic simplifications, um, but as long as you're not using this for a future step, as long as this is the finish line, I don't know that you really need to do all this algebra, but it seems like something I should show. Anyways, either of those are your answers. Moving on, this one finally won't be as bad as the rest of them if you recognize one little thing. If you recognize that e to the 2x is the same as e to the x squared, if you, have e, if you have an exponent raised up to another exponent, the rule is to multiply together those two exponents, and x times 2 is 2x. So really what this question is asking me to do is figure out what is the derivative of e to the x times e to the x. Product rule. Uh, I can use the product rule. Playing the role of f is e to the x. This one, I guess, if you want. Playing the role of g is this e to the x over here. f prime. Well, the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. What about g prime? Yeah, again, derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. So I can put these all together saying it's f prime times g plus g prime times f. Perfectly good answer here. So I'm going to write or. Uh, this is e to the 2x plus e to the 2x, which is equal to 2e to the 2x. Um, turns out there's a much easier way to do this problem. It's called the chain rule. You don't know the chain rule yet, or you're not supposed to anyways. So I'll do it using the product rule. So this derivative is taken right there. All right, moving on. This one, it is, you can do it a few different ways. Uh, the trick here is to recognize that e to the negative x power, maybe I'll even write this as a note, note, e to the negative x power is the same as 1 over e to the x power. So really, this question is asking me what is the derivative of x to the fifth times 1 over e to the x. Oh man, so it's a product rule with a quotient rule inside of it. Well, yeah, I guess if you leave it like this, or you could say that this is the derivative of x to the fifth divided by e to the x. You can kind of think about this as x to the fifth divided by 1 and multiply these two fractions and get to here. The good news, the nicer thing about this than this is this doesn't have any products going on. It's just a quotient. So I use the quotient rule. Playing the role of f is the numerator, x to the fifth power. Playing the role of g is e to the x. f prime is 5x to the fourth. g prime is e to the x. I take all that information and I get that this derivative right here is f prime, 5x to the fourth, times g minus g prime times f, all divided by g squared. Perfectly good answer right here. However, if you have a hankering for simplification, you could factor out an e to the x from the numerator. I guess you could factor out a x to the fourth e to the x if you felt like it. Uh, and then what would be left behind is over here, I just have a five, and over here I'd have an x. And then the denominator, I got this e to the x squared, but I can cancel out this e to the x with one of these e to the x's and call this x to the fourth times 5 minus x divided by e to the x. Other ways you can write this, but I think this is about as pretty as it's going to get, so I'm going to call that good. Um, and again, no, perfectly good answer right here unless I ask you to simplify. Uh, the quotient rule came in this step going from there to there. Okay, last one for this video. Uh, this is just, I don't know, couldn't come up with anything too clever, so I just gave you a huge mess. I'm kind of regretting it now since I have to write solutions. Okay, well, let's do it. So really, what I want you to note here is you've got a bunch of junk going on. You have this plus 7x and this plus 7 and this leading 7 right here. So really, you're taking the derivative of a sum of three things. Here's one of them, here's the other, here's the third. So I can say that that's the sum of the derivatives. I say it's the derivative of this first thing plus the derivative of the second thing plus the derivative of the third thing. But the derivative of the first thing has this 7 as a constant out in front. So I can use my constant rule to bring that out in front of the derivative of the first thing, x plus e to the x squared times x cubed e to the... God, this is miserable. I'm already regretting giving you this problem, but I'm this far. 
Uh, so I got my parentheses right there, and then I'm going to add to that the derivative of 7x. And to that, I'm going to add the derivative of 7. Derivative of 7 of x, the derivative of 7x is just 7. Derivative of 7 is just 0. So really, the challenge with this problem is just figuring out this derivative right here. Note that I still have this 7 that I'm going to multiply it by. And then I'll have to add 7 for this derivative here. But I'm just going to take this problem and work on this guy. So when I'm working on this guy, what I notice is it's a product of a lot of things, a product of four things, in fact. Playing the role of f is x plus e to the x squared. Playing the role of g is x to the third e to the x. A note is you could have broke this up very differently. You could have said that f is x plus e to the x squared times x cubed. And g is just e to the x. You could have done that. I kind of arbitrarily chose to break it up so that there's two factors here and two factors here. And the reason why is because to figure out f prime and g prime, I'm going to have a lot of work to do. Uh, I'm going to have to use the product rule. So this is my first product rule. And to figure out f prime, I'm going to need to use a product rule. And to figure out g prime, I'm going to need to use a product rule. Good lord. Product rule 2. Product rule two is to figure out f prime here. So this is to figure out what goes in that spot. Uh, playing the role of the f now is x plus e to the x. Playing the role of g is x plus e to the x. Because x plus e to the x squared means x plus e to the x times x plus e to the x. As I've mentioned a few times, there's an easier way to do this. It's called the chain rule. You just don't know it yet, so I'm not going to use it. F prime, that's something I can figure out. This is the derivative of a sum. The derivative of a sum is just the sum of the derivatives. The derivative of x is just 1. The derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. If F prime is this, G prime better also be that, since F and G were the exact same thing. So I get here. And now I can put these guys all together. I can say F prime times G plus G prime times f. Um, so really what I have is two of these one plus e to the x times x plus e to the x things. And that's what f prime is. I can do something similar to figure out g prime. I probably need to switch colors here. Maybe I'm back to green. Uh, I guess this would be product rule three. It's a sign that the problem is too hard. Product rule three is figuring out what g prime is. Figuring out what's the derivative of x cubed e to the x. Well, x cubed e to the x is something times something. I better use the product rule. The first of those somethings is x cubed. The second of those somethings is e to the x. I can figure out f prime. It's just 3x squared. I can figure out g prime. It's e to the x. I can throw all those guys back together using the product rule and say that the derivative of x cubed e to the x, in other words, what I'm going to write right here is f prime, 3x squared, times g, e to the x, plus g prime, e to the x, times f, x cubed. Uh, if you have a desire to simplify, you could write this as x squared e to the x times 3 plus x. I don't know that you need to. I'm going to write that right here, x squared e to the x times 3 plus x. Now that I have all these parts, I can get my final answer. The problem is I don't know where the hell I'm going to write it. Um, I don't know. What color should I even use? Answer. How about I'll do it up here? Answer to number 5. I'm going to take all of this information here from this product rule, which I'm going to try my best to circle, although that might be a bad idea. And that is the derivative of this guy. Note that I still have this 7 out in front, so I'm going to start by writing my 7. Then I'm going to write what's the derivative of all this stuff. I'll put a little arrow pointing up there. Well, f prime is 2 times 1 plus e to the x times x plus e to the x. That's all just f prime. I have to multiply that by g, which is x cubed uh, e to the x. 
And then to that, I have to add g prime. g prime is x squared e to the x. Try to write that a little bit more legibly. Times 3 plus x. Uh, and that gets multiplied by f, which is x plus e to the x squared. Is this the answer? Nope. That's just the derivative of this part right here. I got this 7 out in front. Note that I still have the derivative of 7x. That's just 7 plus the derivative of 7, which is just 0. Now this right here is my answer. Wow. Uh, I think I'm going to stop this video right here.